Now, this is quite a discovery, fragments of a biblical scroll. The Bible tells us that the Lord created Adam and Eve in a really nice place for them to live called the Garden of Eden. Ancestors appear to have lived and thrived for 70,000 years. Where is the Garden of Eden? God created the heavens and the earth in the beginning. As you may know, this is the first verse in the Bible, and it signifies the beginning of all creation. God created this magnificent world with His wisdom and brilliance. The Garden of Eden tale is a theological application of mythical motives to explain human evolution from a state of innocence and happiness to the current human predicament of knowledge of sin, sorrow and death. Although it is considered a religious and spiritual concept, many people throughout history and even now believe it exists and may be found. Something incredible was just uncovered in regard to this place that alters everything. Genesis 2, 3, as well as Ezekiel 28 and 31, describe the terrestrial paradise. According to some, the word Eden is derived from the Akkadian phrase Edenu and the Sumerian term Edin both of which indicate plain and step. It is also connected to an Aramaic root word that means fruitful, well watered. In another view, the name Eden is related with the Hebrew word for pleasure. Hence in Genesis 2.8, the Vulgate translates Paradisum Voluptatis, and it is stated in the douay Rheims Bible as, and the Lord God had planted a paradise of pleasure. The garden is frequently alluded to by biblical authors as a lavish location consisting of all the luxury mankind could conceive, which is why it is known as the Garden of God. It is claimed to be a paradise where everything is flawless, with no hunger, death or sickness. The location of Eden is described in Genesis as the source of four tributaries. Because of its particular signature, numerous locations have been considered for its likely location. These include the Persian Gulf's head in southern Mesopotamia or modern Iraq, where the rivers Tigris and Euphrates meet the sea, as well as Botswana and Armenia. Scholars have long disagreed over the exact location, but many have concluded that it may be another worldly area where the gods previously lived. The water from this hallowed garden is said to be the source of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, both of which watered the country around them which is why many experts think the Garden of Eden must have been near these two rivers, according to the Genesis flood account. The Genesis origin story and the Tower of Babel account, the narrative of Eden is reminiscent of an ancient Mesopotamian myth about a primeval man who was stationed in the divine paradise to protect the tree of life. Due to their sinlessness, Adam and Eve are described in the Hebrew Bible as roaming around the garden nude. The Garden of Eden is mentioned in the Bible in several places, including Genesis, Isaiah 51.3, Ezekiel 37.35, and Joel 2.3. Others, such as Zechariah 14 and Ezekiel 47, offer a vision of paradise without using the name Eden. The second section of the Genesis story begins with the Lord God making Adam and placing him in Eden, a garden he planted eastward. Except for the tree carrying the knowledge of good and evil, this man was unbound from any tree in the garden. According to Genesis, the water from this garden of God irrigated four key places. Pishon, which flows into Havilah's territory, Gion, which flows into Cush's region, Tigris, which runs into Assyria's eastern side, and lastly, Euphrates. According to the description, the garden has every single tree that is pleasing to the eye and suitable for sustenance. However, two trees stand out because they are more significant than the others, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The Genesis story isn't entirely consistent, as Genesis 2, 8 and 9, as well as 3, 1 to 3, claim that both trees are there in the garden. However, Genesis 3, 22 to 24, suggests that both of these enormously significant trees were planted on the eastern edge of the Garden of Eden, where Adam was first put. There is also the fact that the story of the garden in Genesis differs from the descriptions supplied by other biblical scriptures. The luxury found in the garden, for example, is not described in Genesis 2, 4b to 3:24. Because of this and other factors, the Garden of God was regarded as a metaphor in the ancient Near East, where the gods were said to live. According to the narrator of Genesis, 
the Garden of Eden was artistically built to serve an etiological function rather than as the divine dwelling of the first man and wife. According to Tarje Stordelen, the Garden of Eden depicted in Ezekiel appears to be located in Lebanon. Lebanon appears to be the alternate location in the Phoenician tale of this garden. Within prophetic texts, there are also some links between Paradise, the Garden of Eden, and the Forest of Lebanon. According to Edward Lipinski and Peter Carl MacArthur, the earliest Sumerian analogue of the Garden of Eden, the Garden of the Gods, is the mountain sanctuary located in Lebanon and the anti-Lebanon hills. There are as many theories about the location of the Garden of Eden as there are scholars. Aside from the Persian Gulf's head in Mesopotamia, as claimed by Juris Zarans, there is another notion that it might be lurking in the Armenian highlands or the Armenian plateau. David Roll, a British archaeologist, believed it might be in Persia or modern-day Iran near Tabriz, but scholarly sources haven't taken him seriously. Certain religious groups believe that the terrestrial paradise exists outside of the Middle East. Some of the earlier Mormon leaders contended that the garden was in Jackson County, Missouri. The Panacea Society of the 20th century believed it was in their city of Bedford, England. A preacher named Eli E. Calloway proposed that this garden be located on the Apalachicola River in Florida, near the hamlet of Bristol. Some reports even claim it's in Jerusalem. Believe it or not, when Christopher Columbus first touched highs on the South American mainland on his third journey, he felt he had found the earthly paradise. To summarize, the Garden of Eden is of enormous importance in human and religious history, and a sizable number of believers feel it is a real site, the location of which is unknown to the majority of them. Scholars believe that the site indicated in the biblical text in combination with the four rivers, the Euphrates, Tigris, Gihon and Pishon, is the most convincing. The difficulty is that they have yet to determine the exact position of Gihon and Pishon. It's also worth noting that huge geographical changes have happened since biblical times, making pinpointing the exact place much more challenging. Another barrier was that, according to scripture, Adam did not build any structures, hence there are no landmarks. The author of Genesis defined it as a particularly distinct site that was simple to find and recognize due to its one-of-a-kind characteristics. However, a fresh notion concerning the location of the terrestrial paradise has developed in recent years. This one is based on a find uncovered in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The idea was advanced by archaeologist Jody Magnus. She was the one who witnessed a finding in a Jerusalem cathedral that prompted her to believe she could have the answer to the million dollar question. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is located in the ancient city and is said to be the location where Jesus of Nazareth was crucified and afterwards raised in a location known as Calvary or Golgotha. According to Magnus, this is also the location where Adam was buried. The location is supposedly located beneath the rock of Golgotha a rocky outcrop where Jesus was crucified. Jody says, below is the chapel of Adam and there is a tradition which goes way back in Christianity which connects this spot to Adam, the first man. When Jesus was crucified on top of the rock above us, his blood flowed down through a crack in the rock and Adam, the first man, lay buried underneath. But when Jesus' blood flowed onto him, he was resurrected. According to legend, Adam spent the most of his life in this same site of the Garden of Eden, thus there may be some validity to this notion. Scholars have claimed that the presence of God dwelled in the temple in early Judaism and during the time of Jesus, which is why Jerusalem was conceived of as the Garden of Eden at the time. While Dr. Magnus sincerely thinks that the Garden of Eden is located in Jerusalem because to its importance in Abrahamic religions and all the biblical events that occurred here, the theory contradicts the Bible depiction, hence many people do not accept it. According to experts, our ancestors are located to the south of the Zambezi River in the northern portion of Botswana, based on the results of a big DNA research conducted in 2019. They came at this conclusion after studying the maternal genetic lineage of anatomically modern humans and discovering that it was really closest to people living in northern Botswana, Namibia and Zimbabwe to the west and east. 
for almost 70,000 years, our ancestors prospered in the region until the climate abruptly shifted and transformed what was once Africa's largest lake, Lake Makgadikgadi, into what is today known as the Kalahari Desert. This resulted in a large exodus of individuals who went abroad between 130,000 and 110,000 years ago. Scientists believe that this triggered the formation of ethnic, genetic and cultural variety that we observe today in the world. There were three main groups, the first to the northeast, the second to the southwest and the third to the north. The southwestern group fared better than the northeastern group, owing to their ability to adapt to marine foraging. The survivors finally adapted to the hot dry land and their maternal descendant may still be found in the area. Professor Vanessa Hayes of the Garvin Institute of Medical Research and the University of Sydney led this research. She noted that the samples from South African and Namibian volunteers assisted the researchers in comparing the DNA code mitogenome, which she describes as a time capsule for ancestral mothers that accumulates changes slowly over generations. She also stated that it was obvious to them that anatomically modern humans first came on the African continent almost 200,000 years ago. What has long been contested is the precise site of this emergence and subsequent spread of our earliest relatives. As a result, it might also be the divine terrestrial paradise that we are all looking for. Several different assertions have been made concerning the location of the heavenly terrestrial paradise but mankind appears to be a long way from reaching the magnificent biblical garden. Tell us what you think in the comments section below.